Hello, I'm Kavita Shane. Becoming a professional athlete is a dream come true. That moment when an athlete goes pro and signs a contract in exchange for a large sum of money. A time when friends and family come together to congratulate the success of career advancement. It's often a time when athletes go out and buy a new car, a new house, a vacation home or two. But what happens when the pro career ends and the money runs out? Is this really possible? Well. It sure is. On average, a pro athlete's career is over by the age of 33 or sooner. And in the NFL, on average, a player's career will last only three and a half years. Statistics also conclude that 75% of football players are bankrupt, divorced, or unemployed five years after leaving the game. So what happens when the fame and the fortune diminishes? We are joined by two very successful individuals to touch on this very subject. David Sugarman, founder of Sugar Time Sports Management, and Judge Ed Newman, a six-round pick out of Duke, number 64, played 12 seasons with the Miami Dolphins under coach Don Shula. Touching on finances, we have financial expert David Sugarman, 14 years on Wall Street, former VP of five of the world's largest institutions, founder of Sugar Time Sports Management, a firm that protects clients' assets during and after their careers. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure, Kavita. Now, word on the street is mm. that you have some huge names on your roster. You do. Couple. We've got the insider info. We know you do. You, we know you can't tell us, right? Mm. You can't Correct. even tell us one. Not one, but you can Google. Okay, we can Google. Google. <laughs> now, listen, you were quoted with saying that yeah. athletes make similar mistakes. What did you mean by that? And why do you choose to focus on this particular audience? A lot of these, these kids come to, come to us, you know, right out of college. Mm -hmm. Five, ten million dollar signing bonuses. They, they just don't know what to do with the money, you know. And where we step in is we educate them from day one, right? So, so previous to them getting the money, they get the money, we tell them how to manage it, we ladder out conservative bonds for them, mm -hmm. just protecting their assets and protecting them from other people that are trying to take their money or take advantage of them. What are the similar mistakes that they make? Overspending. You know, if somebody hypothetically receives a $10 million you know, contract and out of that $2 million is guaranteed, mm -hmm. these, a lot of these kids go out there and they spend $10 million. Buy a Bentley. Know, or two. Right? Mansion. Mansion. <laughs> but they still have to pay agent fees, they have right. to pay their taxes, a lot of them have previous debt. So it's just really, you know, that verbiage fighting off more than you can show. Mm. That's what they do. And we, we, we protect them from, from making those mistakes. Can you tell us some of the horror stories that you've witnessed of athletes that maybe don't have the knowledge or access to someone like you? The, the horror stories where you think a $100 million guy is, is worth, you know, $100 million, yes? And, and uh, you know, the assets would move in. When I was over at, 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 uh, at Deutsche Bank, we'd move assets in from, from athletes. and it was 2% of what the contract was. Um, and you know, a $6 million condo that needs to close in Miami Beach, and three cars, and four yeah. houses, and it's just collecting this, this huge mess and, and straightening it out. Now, David, what are some of the most important things you lay out on that first conversation you have with a new client? You know, the rookie, we, we talk about budgets, how much money they're gonna be you know, making mm -hmm. in the first year break that down per month after tax dollars and really help them then with their expenses, the outflow. So that'll determine you know, what kind of car we're gonna get them. A lot of these kids, as you mentioned earlier, they want, the, they want a Bentley, right? But they can't afford it. Right. So it helps us you know, determine what car to get them. Um, if they make a team in, in uh, Cincinnati, we have to find them an apartment to rent. So it determines how much money we're gonna spend, whether it's a one bedroom, a two bedroom. I mean, it really, it's all about the finances. A vet is, usually these vets come in and it's a mess. I mean, there's so <laughs> They're coming much. to you when it's gotten to that point, yeah, when they should have came sooner. Right, and now, now on that note, you know, I, I met with a veteran yesterday who is a well-known NFL player who sends me a text message after the meeting, I wish I met you five years ago. 
And I mean, that's, that's I, powerful. It's very powerful. And, you know, you talk about a guy who, who, who should have $10 million in the bank as a fraction of that. So I get a lot of that. Yes. What can you tell someone that doesn't have a David Sugarman at their disposal? I know they should. <laughs> you know, the answer is going to be come on, have David Sugarman. <laughs> There's only one of you There's and you have a great team. But. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do your due diligence on the people that you hire. Okay. Um, especially, I mean, and that's in all aspects, right? Your financial advisor, the guy getting you a car, the guy booking your, your jets, your mm -hmm. boats. I mean, do your due diligence on these people. Um, unfortunately, it's a trial and error for an athlete. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of these guys are working with somebody that they went to middle school or high school with that's managing their portfolios. And I've seen it many a times where, you know, they're taking big fees out yeah. and not doing the right thing. So people are taking advantage of them. They are definitely taking advantage of them. And usually it's more than one person. Okay, well, let's talk about post-lockout, uh, NFL lockout. You sure. have so many NFL clients. Yes. What's, how do they deal with the lockout? And now, how is the market looking for them post-lockout? The lockout for me personally, and, and I don't want to offend any of my NFL boys, but um, it, it was actually a good thing for the business because it gave me the opportunity to go and see my players. They weren't really, they, they were training, but locally right. in their city. So it was easy to go get in front of more, of more people. Okay. Um, so the lockout, as you mentioned, is, is, is over now. Um, my latest obstacle was last week was watching you know, kids get cut from the team. Right. You, you know, you have these, these rookies that are trying to make the team. And, and so, so that's been difficult when you hear somebody really care yeah. about enough faith in not making a team. Which is good, though, if they had you on their side because then they would have money now even though they're cut. Correct. <laughs> what are you advising your clients, your MBA clients? NBA is tough for me. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of my guys are overseas now, um, so on the business side, it's it's difficult to communicate with them. NBA, it's it's the same thing with the money. They're not getting any money now, mm -hmm. um, and I, it, this is going to be a tough one. I mean, I don't foresee uh, the season beginning until you know January. Right. Well, thank you so thank much you for, for joining us yeah, today. Your clients you. are in a much better financial place thank because you. of you and your management team. Thank you very much. Ed, you played for the Dolphins for 12 seasons. The year before you came though, that's when Miami had that undefeated perfect championship season. Was, I know all those guys. Yeah. And then you came as a rookie and as you went rookie. to the Super Bowl that year, defeated the Vikings. You got the ring was, your first year. Here it is. That was a wonderful Let's opportunity. Check it out. That is beautiful. And you, you were in four Pro Bowls, okay? Right. You were named first team All Pro in 1984. All right. And the Dolphins played two more Super Bowls during your career. 82 and 84 season. Right. And you would think that in your downtime, you would be relaxing, hanging out with your friends, but not you. You were coaching wrestling and you were studying law at the University of Miami. Why? Football is a temporary occupation. It's, it's a young man's game and everybody eventually has got to reinvent themselves and it's good to keep your options open. Football gives you a lot of opportunities and, and um, if, you're, you know, if you polish your tools a little bit, you can, you can have a nice segue into private life. Now your post-NFL career has been amazing. Seven years an attorney and now you're a county court judge in Miami. You have a beautiful wife, Kathy, two gorgeous daughters, Stephanie and Holly. How did you make this unusual career transition from on the field into the courtroom? I think you got to go back uh, when I was playing ball, very frustrated, looking for something to segue into life after football. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it was frustrating. If you're in real estate, um, you really can't make sales because the, you know, the, the season starts. You got to get into the weight room and do your training, mm -hmm. and be ready for it. Very frustrating. You know, I opened up a couple of gyms I mentioned. And um, you have to be a silent part, or people are stealing uh, of the cash, and it, it becomes a problem. There were very key people that, that helped guide me. My, my brother-in-law is Andy Lineoff, and he's a, a very prominent lawyer here in town, and said, um, and, and, and get together is one of my best friends, uh, you've got a very fine mind, and you ought to look into uh, law school, and the University of Miami will work out well for you. I think you'll get in. And, and the dean of admission agreed, and, and, and the, the rest is history. Never had what I think of, of uh, law as a, as a career uh, from my family background, and uh, oh, wow. I'm so glad I made that. Uh, I took some of that advice. Which one was more difficult, the law book or the playbook? Well, if I were 60 years old uh, playing NFL football, I would say that was more difficult. <laughs> But if I were if I were 23 years yeah. old and um, you know I don't believe that I think you could pick it up like yesterday. Your father had told you athleticism, although a gift, is fleeting. Now that is very wise, and he also said 
You become more than an athlete, you become a great athlete, and that justifies a reputation, and a reputation is something you can build on to make a difference in this world. My father was in my, in my corner and said, I think it's justified, like he says, the paraphrase is, if you are excellent at it and can build a reputation on it. To build on. And it is something that um, um, will get you into the, into the door. I think people who are idle or, or, or have a lot of money and, and, and they're just retired at a young age might become the devil's playground. They might, they might fall in with a bad crowd or they might make bad decisions right. uh, later on. Or they uh, might be depressed while they're retired. They, they could easily be famous fleeting. Generally speaking, players are forgotten right. over the decades. Right. They remember, they always have their memories and, and, and you can never take that away, but it's some depth of, of a life to, have, have, uh, to reinvent yourself mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's best to try to do that uh, or to prepare yourself before you retire. Not available for everybody, but possible. Right. And I'm an example, and I'm not the only example. So what advice do you have for current pro athletes, especially rookies, so that they don't go broke? Uh, you don't have to act like the newly rich people and buy the, you know, the Bentley automobiles and um, uh, you know, the gigantic stones for your, for your girlfriends and all that. And while I'm on the girlfriend idea, if you're inclined to marry, stay married. That's a good way to lose your estate. I love it. Uh, um, uh, if, you, if you will. Another thing is to stay away from uh, people who are not bona fide investment uh, uh, counselors. Uh, you should use perhaps um, a lot of diligence, and get real educated uh, from, uh, uh, for what's out there in the investment world. Big name, classic institutions are a good idea and having a lawyer, are, uh, it's a good idea. Maybe a little more expensive in the, in the short run but it can, can make a, a, a big difference. And then live within your means uh, um, uh, while you're accumulating a, a nest egg for the times afterwards. Before we go, Ed, now I heard you're a big, strong guy. I heard that at your career at Miami, you were the bench press master. Okay, let's get down and dirty. What's the most you've ever benched? I was able to achieve 540 pounds. In my day, that was a lot of weight. That's like five of me. That's right. <laughs> it was... It was um, <laughs> Just very interesting to get on the Olympic bar and to watch the bar bend. You know, was from the from the weights on the side. Well, uh, you know what? From the pigskin to the gavel, you're truly sure. an inspiration. Thank well, you so thank much you. for joining us today. Right, thank you for having me, and I hope uh, hope some of the young people are listening and can benefit. And you heard it here first, and now there's no excuse to go broke. I'm Kavita Shane. <laughs> I want to do it. Okay, you do. Oh, I got on camera. A little charge. Okay, this is the Ready? second clap. You got it. Kathy Newman, Ed Newman's wife, former dolphin, now a judge, right? Yes. Listen, I know that your husband really loves his job. Does he come home and like wear the robe around the house? Absolutely not. No. No. When he comes home, I'm the one that wears the robe. Oh, oh really? Absolutely. I love that. Yay! I'd say that was close enough.